All right, a good friend of mine brought over his uh, his voltmeter, uh, which uh, was in a trash can during a uh, close down of one of the divisions uh, that he was in. And uh, it turns out that this meter actually went through a division that I used to work at also. So it's an oldie. Yeah. It dates quite a while ago. There's a, uh, a tag down here saying it was at uh, OED, uh, Hewlett Packard. So it's an HP instrument, but it was used inside uh, Hewlett Packard. And OED was the Opto Electronics Division. So they're the ones who did LEDs and stuff. So um, I don't know if I own this meter or not. <laughs> you never know. Uh, but I certainly, I probably certainly saw it when I was there. Um, probably wasn't uh, too many of these meters laying around, maybe a dozen or so of them, but I probably laid eyes on it at one time in the past. But there's an asset sticker here, a calibration sticker here. Uh, not calibrated sticker, actually. And uh, he says that it doesn't work. And he tried some easy things to do, but he couldn't get it to go. So I said I'd try to fix it for him. Um, it is a uh, 3466A. These were really nice meters. Uh, they were quite popular in the day. And I think they came in a couple different case options. This is the rack mount case. But I think they came in a uh, plastic case as well, if I remember right. Um, anyway, let's, uh, let's open this thing up and take a look inside. It's just two screws in the back, I think, holding this thing together. I think it'll come apart now. Let's see, I remember how to take this thing apart. I'm pretty sure, pretty sure that's all you have to do. Huh. Oh, there it goes. <laughs> all right, that's just come apart. All right, so just a plastic uh, top, and yeah, there we're inside. So we can take a look in here. Um, there's no HPIB on it, so this is all just for the voltmeter. So it looks like there's some type of uh, digital IC here and some digital board. So it's probably a counter. The way that the, the voltmeters worked in the old days is you just had a dual slope integrator and you just counted the number of steps up and down the slopes and displayed it on the front panel. So this is probably the digital part of a counter. Uh, so Cool little jumper here, probably for self-test reasons and stuff. Um, looks like there's some things inside here. Warning, line voltage exposed, shield is attached, do not use flux remover near the switches, so switches will dissolve on you. Um, there's resistors here for calibration, looks like. There's a fuse, he says the fuse blue, so that's, uh, that's a clue. I don't know why the fuse would blow. He replaced the fuse and it still doesn't seem to work. A uh, small little transformer. So yeah, there's probably AC laying around this thing. A lot of times these things are mechanical in nature for something that's old. Board to board connectors or other types of things. And uh, so yeah, looks like there's some more adjustments up here. It says consult manual for calibration procedure. So we can go through a calibration of this thing too if we get it to work. Uh, so, yeah, let's turn this thing on and uh, see what kind of symptoms it has. All right, one, two, three. Well, the LEDs light up. Oh, that doesn't look good. That doesn't look good at all. It's doing all sorts of weird things. 
Uh, so we'll put it in volts mode. Oh, it, it's making noises in the back too. Can you hear that? Hmm. Hmm, that's not good. Maybe that's a, uh, a relay doing something funny, maybe? I don't know what else would maybe be making a noise. Certainly not the transformer of that small. Um, oh, there we go. Well, change the range and it quieted down. Auto. Uh, yeah, I hear it now. So it's all trying to auto range. So yeah, this thing is real messed up. Okie dokie. So we have our work cut out for us. Um, yeah, it is a sick puppy. Definitely a sick puppy. Well, hmm. let's see if we can find some schematics for this thing. All right, I thought I'd take the bottom off since we're going to be needing to get into there also. And I found that I think it's completely shielded on the bottom, which is nice. There's a big, uh, big aluminum plate along the bottom. So that is a nice feature. I noticed there wasn't any plate on top, but that was just a digital section. And there was a, uh, uh, there's a screw there. Uh, yeah, there's a screw down there. So this thing needs to come apart in order to get it apart. Uh, there's a screw here that takes this digital card off and then there's additional shielding on top. And then there's a screw down below that allows us to take that bottom shield off. So yeah. All right. Well, I thought I would just get it ready, but let's need what, uh, Let's go find the schematics for this thing. Okay, I was able to find schematics. Um, I've started to remove some of the parts. So there was a, um, let, me, let me remove the power on this thing so I don't screw anything up. So there was a um, shield in here. Uh, I think I can, I think I can show you that. So uh, there's a, a shield that sits in here that, that shields all the analog circuitry and there's a shield on the bottom. So all this analog circuitry is, sh is shielded really, really well. And then there's the digital board that, that comes on top here that uh, there's a connector for the front panel and then a connector from board to board. So that sits on top. Uh, so I think this is the display driver, at, mm, best as I can guess now, and the actual chips that do the DMV stuff are down here. Uh, there is an A to D um, here. It's an AD53. Uh, what is it? A 536. AD536. So it's a small one. So it's probably an 8-bit AD or something like that. Um, so um, I thought I would start troubleshooting it. First, the first thing you always do is take a look at the power supply, especially when it blew a fuse and it didn't. That kind of it gives me a clue to maybe what's going on, but we'll, we'll test my hypothesis. Uh, let's see. Let's get this out of the way. All right. So it's laid out really nice. Uh, power supply sections down over here. Um, and there's some test points over here. They're marked plus seven, plus five, minus seven and minus 2.6. And then there's a, a plus 6.3 over here. So we got a lot of things we can measure. So let me, uh, we find a power cord. Okay, plug in the power cord. And we will turn on the DVM. All right. So nicely, there's a ground test point right here. And I will turn on the power. And we'll measure these test voltages, minus 2.6. Measuring minus two, that's a bit odd. Uh, minus seven is measuring minus 5.3 plus 5 is measuring 3.8 plus 7 is measuring 5.4 and plus 3.6 is measuring 5.3 and then there's some capacitors here. Uh, this capacitor has minus 18. This capacitor has plus 13 and this capacitor has 11. So you'd think everything was just fine. Um, but uh, because all the voltages are low, it could be that we're not seeing the whole picture. So let's hook up a oscilloscope so we can see if these 
capacitors are actually filtering or not. Um, so let's hook up our ground and let's take a look at, oh come on, there we go. Let's take a look at this cap here. Okay, so uh, all right, so this is the negative rail. So it goes down. Let's see, where am I? I'm on five, I'm on five so 5, 10, 15. Yeah, so that's a nice negative rail. Here's the positive rail. That looks fine. And then this is the five volt rail and bang. So that is our problem, at least one of the problems. Uh, this capacitor on the uh, plus five, plus six points, anyway, the plus side of it things, the capacitor just looks like it's gone bad. All right. So how do you test that? Uh, it is a 220 microfarad capacitor. And so I'm going to grab a capacitor here. Uh, this is just, sorry, it's not in focus, but this is just a random capacitor. This is a 100, 100 microfarad. So I'm going to put 100 microfarads across that bad one. I'm going to leave the bad one in circuit. And I'm just going to pop this one in there. And I'm just going to hold it by hand carefully without shorting anything out. And look at that. It went away. So just an extra 100 microfarads and things are looking good. So I think what we'll do is we'll replace, we probably should replace all three capacitors um, just because of the age of this thing and uh, since we have it open. So there's only three electrolytics in the whole thing. Um, so yeah, let's uh, replace those three. And uh, let me show you those again. Those are right down here. This is the one that was giving us the ripple. And I put the uh, capacitor across this one. And then there are these two other ones here. I'm just going to replace all three and uh, see if this thing starts to work. Fingers crossed. All right, so I have uh, three new caps down there. And uh, Let's take a look at with the uh, with the oscilloscope. Make sure we don't have any ripple anymore. Uh, all right. Let's hook up to this one. Uh, there we go. That's the negative rail one. That's the positive rail one. Those were both good in the old one, but I replaced them anyway. And then this is the one that was bad, so now it's good. Okay, so now we have a bunch of good. Uh, we have a bunch of good capacitors. Let's go ahead and measure those voltages again. See if they're measuring something reasonable now. So here's our minus 2.6. It is now minus 2.6. Here's our minus 7, it is now minus 6.99. Here's our plus 5, it is now 5007. And our plus 7 is now 6923. And our 6.3 is, uh, 6.3 is not doing anything at all on that one. I'm not sure if that one, that one's kind of floating around. That's kind of strange. I don't know why that one's floating around. But anyway. I'm assuming that this thing is going to work. So I'm going to I'm going to put the board bit, the board back in it, and we'll take a look at the front panel and see if it looks like a voltmeter. Okay, let's. I uh, put the board. But I haven't buttoned up. I, none of the shielding or anything is in there. But let's see if it uh, does something. Yeah, there we go. Uh, it says volts, zero volts. That's great. So let's put some uh, let's put some volts into it. Uh, let's see here. How do we do this? Um, let me, well, just for now, just for now, uh, this has five, five volts on it. So let's see if we can't measure five volts. There we go. 5.015. That's very, very close to what it actually is. So I say the thing works and works just great now. Uh, so let me uh, put all the shielding back on it and we'll calibrate it.